they don't want asylum claimants in their provinces. <laughs> Welcome back to the Canada Inform channel. My name is Wolo. I am a regulated Canadian immigration consultant. I am based in New Brunswick, Canada. I used to be in Manitoba, still in Manitoba. And I want to say thank you to all of my subscribers. If you're new to this channel, please just subscribe and also click the notification bell and you'll be getting updates concerning Canadian immigration and life in Canada. I know today's topic is going to trigger some people, but it is what it is. Um, it is not me. It is what was going on on Twitter last week, which I want to talk about today. And it's about asylum seekers. Of course, you see the title. So I want us to start from the beginning. As of 2023, according to the United Nations um, Refugee Agency, which is the UNHCR, um, I'm looking at my screen so that I can get the correct information. 144,035 people um, sought asylum in Canada as of 2023. And according to them, it said it was 1.5 times the previous record set in 2022. So in between 2016 and 2022, there was a surge of asylum claim. It was mainly from the Roxham Road. The Roxham Road is the road that links New York and Montreal. So that road, people were using that road to come into Canada to claim asylum. And then the United States and Canada came to an agreement to block that road. So it no, it no longer was an access for people. It was never an official route. Normally, if you want to claim asylum, you have to claim asylum at the port of entry, which is um, you take a flight, you come into Canada probably as a visitor, and then at the border, you at the airport, you claim asylum. And then that Roxham Road was an unofficial route that people were using to come into Canada to claim asylum. So the U.S. government and Canada agreed to block that road and not allowing people to claim asylum from that road. But after they did that, it still did not stop the number of people claiming asylum. If you recall, I did a video sometime last month or two months ago, I can't remember, but I'll put the details on the screen where I talked about a Nigerian lady who had lived in Canada for some time that was facing deportation. And in that video, I mentioned that we had information that many people who were coming to Canada as visitors were being forced to claim asylum at the Montreal airport. And I said, if you don't want to claim asylum, avoid the Montreal airport. So what they were doing was they will send you back. If, if you come as a visitor and it's your first time, they ask you certain questions at the port of entry. If you are not able to answer the questions, especially if you didn't do the application yourself, maybe you paid an agent to help you prepare your application and you get to the border, they ask you questions concerning your application and you can't provide the answers. They will tell you to go back to your country of origin. That's, they will put you in the next flight, back to your country of origin, or you have the option of claiming asylum. So there has been a surge of asylum claimants. The data for the number of asylum claimants in 2024 has not yet been released, but as of 2023, the number is 144,035. And, and the Immigration Refugee Board, they are very slow in actually hearing people's cases. And besides that, you have lots of people whose claims have, have been rejected and they are trying to deport them and they are trying to fight the deportation order. You know, all these things is just making the system backlogged and during this period the people who have claimed asylum especially those that came in between late last year and this year they are waiting for their claims to be heard before they now be granted work permit and then before they can now start working so while they are waiting for all of this to be done they are kept in limbo they cannot work they would be provided shelter and then some form of stipend to manage themselves until their case is heard before further hearing. So the period of waiting, the cost of actually taking care of these people, providing shelter for them, feeding them, it is the government, the federal government that bears this cost. And Ontario and Quebec have been um, managing these expenses and complaining or talking back to the government, the, that's the federal government, to provide more financial resources because... There, there has been an increase of the number of asylum claimants that are coming in. So last week, the New Brunswick government, <laughs> you know, uh, put up a Twitter post. I'm going to put it on the screen and said that they, they don't want asylum claimants in New Brunswick. 
and that triggered the immigration minister to start firing back. The New Brunswick government, the Nova Scotia government, Alberta government, all of them, they were now putting up posts on Twitter stating that they don't want asylum claimants in their provinces. Now, this is quite tricky. It is not that they say they don't want them. They are saying that they don't want a situation where the federal government will ship these asylum claimants because most of them are actually in Toronto and that's Ontario and Quebec. They don't want a situation where the federal government will ship these asylum claimants to their provinces without giving them any money to provide shelter for them and to give them um, some form of stipend, daily stipend or weekly stipend to sustain themselves. So this is the bone of contention why the provinces are saying that they don't want asylum Claimants. And then the immigration minister was firing back saying that, especially for uh, Alberta, put up a memo where the Alberta government was requesting I, um, the federal government to give them more provincial nomination slots, about 30,000 provincial nomination slots. And so this is where it becomes tricky. The Alberta government says they want specific type of immigrants, economic immigrants, whereas immigration minister wants to distribute asylum claimants to all the provinces and then later on they will compensate the provinces for um, any expenses they've incurred in terms of providing shelter and you know any stipend and all of that so the government the provincial government are fighting back and saying no they don't want any asylum claimants in their provinces because they are full there's no space there's no space for shelter if they are going to bring those asylum claimants they should be coming that's the the federal government should be giving them the money ahead of time before they can you know say they want they will distribute the asylum claimants um, amongst the provinces. So that has been the back and forth. And this issue is actually fueling hatred and resentment. It's fueling so much hatred and resentment against asylum seekers. For me, what I, I would suggest to the federal government is they shouldn't be wasting time. If somebody says they want to claim asylum immediately, give them work permits, let them go and start fending for themselves so that they can be on their own instead of this long period of waiting for their claims to be heard before they are being granted work permit. It, it, you know, this period of them waiting is telling on the economy because funds have to be disbursed to these guys. This is where the Canadians are really, really upset about this whole asylum uh, claim thing. And the effect of this is that a lot of visiting visas will be rejected. It's already started happening where a lot of visiting visas is now being rejected because they noticed that most of the asylum claimants were people who applied for visiting visas, although some of them were forced to claim asylum, like I mentioned in my in one of my last videos, out of their own will. They didn't want to claim asylum, but they were forced. If you didn't answer your questions well, you will be forced to claim asylum. And um, so it's just for the public to know that if you apply for a visiting visa, there's a high chance of refusal, a high chance of refusal because um, there's so much noise going on about the population of asylum seekers, um, the funding that is going into taking care of asylum seekers is, I mean, a lot of people are complaining. So to mitigate the number of people that can potentially claim asylum in Canada, there will be a high visa refusal rate. Um, that doesn't mean that's a high visiting visa refusal rate. That doesn't mean you shouldn't apply. If you qualify, if you have family members, you genuinely want to come and see your family members, um, you've, you have a travel history, well, technically, you would have a higher chance of approval. So we are now back to the period of a high visiting visa refusal rate. And I just felt I should do this video to, you know, inform you guys of what is going on. Thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video. Happy Bye. people, the true north of the land of freedom. Oh, oh, oh. Here we are, from far and wide we stand on God. Happy people, the true north of the land of freedom. Oh, oh, oh. Here we are, from far and wide we stand on God. Our home, our native land, in God we will trust.